is a Vastu expert, long time practicing a Vastu, also a beautiful artist and a great devotee. So I'm <sighs> Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me and really delighted to be able to share some of this really valuable knowledge of Vastu, except to tell you what Vastu is. It's, it's the design and architecture system from ancient India. It's considered to be 10 to, 000, 10 to 14,000 years old. You may have heard 5,000 years, but that's because so much of Indian history and the documentation is a bit skewed. Uh, it's also thousands of years older than feng shui and part of its origin. So Vastu has to do with that expansive space. And if you look at the word Vastu with two A's in English, V-A-A-S-T-U, which is the long ah sound in Sanskrit, that's the embodied energy, like a house. The energy itself is vastu with one A, or a short A in Sanskrit. I chose to put on the book the um, one A version because it just looks a little more normal to Westerners. It was easier to comprehend. Okay, so you see that the center is space or akasha. That's that expansiveness, which we wouldn't want to block. So ideally, the center of a room, the center of a building, a house, an Ayurveda center would be open. It wouldn't have a fireplace, a kitchen, a, a furnace, a staircase, that you would keep that open instead of oppressing it. And there are specific vibrational effects that are not so beneficial that happen when you violate this law of nature. Uh, for example, if the center is oppressed, it's supposed to be really hard on the emotions of a woman, uh, that it affects that somehow. But regardless of whether you notice it or not, it's not good energetically to have something there. And in Vastu, we have various corrections that we can do, but sometimes you can't do anything about it, in which case you just have to surrender because you may have noticed nothing in the world is perfect. <laughs> we do the best we can with what we have. Um, we're all blessed with these wonderful human bodies. They all have some quirks, some of which we can't really change. And so we have to just surrender on those, that it's part of the karma that we have to walk through. And we work on what we can create a change in. Other elements, Northeast is water element. Now, water is very powerful. And if we have a water body in the Northeast, it makes everything flow more easily. And so that's where you would want water. But if you have water in the center, it's going to create some difficulty. Likewise with Southeast, it's fire element, Agni. You're really familiar with Agni because of that digestive fire and understanding how important Agni is and how many important roles it plays in our physical bodies our emotional bodies and in the world around us. You have to have fire element. Otherwise, this we would be living on a cold rock and it would be really difficult. So fire element goes in the Southeast. That's the ideal place to have a kitchen, which is of course a major center of Ayurveda in the home. Ideally, our kitchen and our stove are in the Southeast, but they're not always going to be. If they're in an area that's missing fire energy, then we have to do something to help support it. Uh, this is also a good place for electrical equipment like computers and stereo systems and all of that. Southwest, Earth earth element. This is the best place for the master bedroom because it's grounded and more quiet that way. 
And so ideally, your master bedroom is in the Southwest. And also ideally, your children's bedroom is not in the Southwest. Children tend to run the household and the family way more than is appropriate anyway. And to keep things in balance, the parents should be in the Southwest. It definitely helps with sleep to be in the Southwest. Northwest is air element, Vayu. This is not the best place for the master bedroom. It, it, what happens if you have a lot of air element? It's going to increase what dosha? Yeah, vata, vata will increase with air element. Would an increase in vata dosha, derangement of that, help you sleep? Nope, that's gonna make a mess. So we don't put a bedroom in that area unless it's a guest room. Why is it good for a guest room? Because we want our guests to come and visit, but we don't want them to get so settled in that they just want to stay long term. You know, three day visits, great. Three months, we weren't really planning on that, but they're so comfortable and they don't want to leave because they've got the Southwest bedroom. I'm going to have to do a little switching around of the rooms. Okay, so those are the five elements and how they correspond to the directions. And that is, in a nutshell, the most important stuff you need to know for Vastu, because everything is going to go by this. Vastu goes by the cardinal directions. Why? They're universal. And Vastu goes by universal cosmic energies and earth energies. For example, with earth energies, they always move upwards in a clockwise direction. And this is acknowledged by indigenous people all over the world. So clockwise direction is good. And so having it, having the um, whole house align with the cardinal directions will make it a lot easier to make corrections and also creates a much more comfortable situation energetically. Most homes are just haphazardly placed wherever they go. Uh, they wanted to get the view or they wanted to cram in as many houses into the neighborhood as possible to make the most amount of money. It's not organized by what is energetically the best direction to face and are we facing on the cardinal directions? No, they're all over the place. So you just do the best you can with how the house is placed, but all these things have a profound impact on the occupants of the building. If the house is aligned with the cardinal directions, it's much more comfortable if it's skewed. And for example, the corners are where the cardinal directions are and the secondary directions of Northwest, uh, Northeast and so forth are where the, um, where the, the sides of the house are. Uh, things don't work out quite as well, but you can't really change this. You know, that you can't kind of turn the dial. <laughs> the house is where it is. So again, these are all issues that are just vibrational influences that can create difficulties, sure. just like your birth chart. Yes. Sure, can I just ask you if you could pause a sec? Because what you're saying is so important. I want to make sure it's understood. Yeah. The house should face, let's say, east. Yeah. So if, if we could just, everybody could find east on this map, right? It's going to be between northeast and southeast, that line. So you, if you imagine that your door was on that line, you'd come in that way and you'd have a room to the northeast, a room to the southeast. But, but what Sherry's saying is if your front door faces, let's say, southwest, as ours does, uh, Michael Mustro came to the house and he just kept shaking his head. He's like, why do people build like this? Why do people build like this? Yeah. So we're facing the Southwest. So every room you're saying the sides of the house are facing the secondary directions. Is yeah, right? when, when, when that happens, the reason this creates a problem if the house uh, is facing um, in a secondary direction like Southwest is that those elemental energies of air, water, fire, and earth collect in the corners when you when you um, build the foundation of the house and start construction. 
if there's no corner in the southeast, et cetera, for them to collect in, they kind of spread out and it just doesn't, it's not just doesn't work as well energetically. They need those corners to collect in. Uh, and the cardinal direction should be on the sides. So that's why it's problematic. And of course, there's lots of things you can do. You can put a Vastuvedic pyramid in the house, which rectifies just about everything. Uh, you can put a three-dimensional Sri Yantra in the house, the Mary Chakra, and that will also be constantly emitting very positive vibrational energy and helping to correct things. Um, you can put up individual planetary yantras and so forth, but um, you can't really change the orientation unless it's new construction or that it's a, a house that doesn't have a foundation and you move it or, or you move a house and create a new foundation for it, all of which are very involved. So yeah, it's not the end of the world. It, it just creates vibrational influences that throw a little bit more mess into the mix. So, you know, if you're going to be moving, then it would be valuable to think about these basic points or get a consultation. Um, one of the types of consultations I do for people is a rush job on, uh, we found this house and we, we think we wanna put in an offer on it, but we're a little hesitant. So I, they send me the floor plans and the lot plan. I look at it within, within less than 24 hours, I get back with, to them saying, this is a great house, you can work with this, or it's a good house, there's rectifications you can do, or keep looking, do not buy this house. And it can be a little disappointing, but uh, it really pays off. So that's one of the kinds of consultations that I, I can do for people uh, as a Boston consultant. And that's a really good one because just like with Jyotish, you're averting the danger that's not yet arisen. Uh, if it was a house, for example, that had the kitchen in the center of the house and the only bathroom in the Northeast, I would not want you to buy that house. It would be better to wait, even if it takes months longer to find a house than to take that one. Uh, same thing if you're selling a house, it's okay. You, you are not karmically, ethically bound to reveal all the Vastu flaws in a place that you're selling. It was just time to move on and it's a beautiful home and someone will want it and it will fit their karma at that time. But when you look for a new one, you look for one without those negative features. Yes, can enter on any of the four sides. But there are certain sectors that are auspicious and others that carry negative vibrational influences. When you look at the floor plan of a house uh, in Vastu, you have a grid pattern of rectangles or, you know, or the square form of a rectangle, depending upon the house. And this isn't just a convenient diagram for you know working with it it has something to do with what happens on the subtle level when um, something manifests into physical form from through the bindu point uh, connecting the seen and the unseen worlds so from the unmanifest pure consciousness something comes into form in the physical world there are particular mechanics of how that takes place, certain spin and certain arrangement. And what it is, is for houses, that grid pattern is a nine by nine grid pattern. And all of those sectors are gonna be the same size, uh, depending upon the mother wall of the house, which is the basic rectangle of the house. Some houses don't really have a mother wall. It's kind of, we have to invent one and it in includes areas outside the house. Again, because houses are built without knowledge of this important uh, life affirming uh, body of knowledge. We live in the physical world. There are always going to be problems and negative influences in life. 
but we can alleviate as many of those as possible. And we can also have our knowledge to fall back upon have our knowledge also about the nature of the mind or chitta that it tends to dwell on the negative so that we can notice that oh i'm spiraling on this and just take a step back and get freed up from that crazy nature of the mind to dwell on the negative mm -hmm. we can also think oh gosh i skipped my meditation this morning i really shouldn't be doing that because it sets me up for the day that my brain needs to be immersed in pure consciousness twice a day in order for all those different brain cells to be healed. So, you know, you have to be more careful. Have you noticed that even if you clean out one drawer or tidy up your closet, mm -hmm. how much better you feel? Mm -hmm. Or how if you just vacuum the house, how it's like the air is more clean, that everything's more sparkly. Yeah. All these things make a difference. There are lots of remedies we can use in Vastu and lots of things that we can do to help our space. Our meditation helps improve the space. Taking your shoes off before you enter the house, leaving them at the entrance, instead of tracking all that electromagnetic pollution and pesticides and all, all kinds of you know, dog poop and everything else into the house, keeps it much cleaner. You don't have to work as hard to clean it. And it feels like a separate space uh, mm -hmm. where it is more sacred and, and more calm that you feel the energy settle down from the outside world, that mm -hmm. it's more of a shelter and a sanctuary. You're talking about a house or an apartment or a room where it's, there's just not any sunlight that it's not filling up with sunlight. And we know how much better that makes things feel. Um, you can get full spectrum light bulbs and put those in your space. It will help immensely, especially if your landlord, if you're renting, has put in ceiling light fixtures that are really cheap LEDs that tend to make you feel half asleep and make you feel more depressed and have less energy. Uh, you can you can get replacements for those, and you can put in lamps with incandescent bulbs that are full spectrum. Uh, and there are high end LEDs that are expensive but really worth it. And of course, if you own the house, if it's a north or an east wall, add more windows because. The north and the east have very nourishing energetic rays that come and hit the house. And you want as much of that coming into the house as you can. Yeah. And if it's not a bedroom, um, you can pop in some skylights. And that can help brighten it up too. The um, kitchen. Kitchen, as you know, is the heart of the home in so many ways because this is where you're preparing all the food to nurture the family. If your kitchen is in the Southeast, which ideally is the best location because there's fought, that's fire element. Also on a subtle level, there's infrared rays in the Southeast and those are very nourishing to the body. So it's always recommended that the woman of the household go and put her around in the kitchen and make tea and maybe you know, stew some apples or make oatmeal or something first thing in the morning, because you're going to get nourished with those infrared rays. Also in the kitchen, ideally you're facing east to cook. Um, you may not be able to rearrange your stove, but if it's in the east, that's ideal. If your kitchen's not in the southeast and not in an area that actually has fire energy, uh, the south also has a lot of fire energy then um, I like to put a Mars Yantra next to the stove. And somehow it makes you feel a little more inclined to go cook as opposed to, oh, I want to eat, but I don't want to have to cook. Uh, it feels a little more pumped up for that. So um, that's where the stove should be ideally is where, you, you know, that you're, if you're, you have your burners in front of you, this is, these are the burners and East is over here, but I'm facing east. That's the ideal. Um, you're not always going to have the ideal. What does a fire need to burn besides fuel? 
air, right? If you have a candle and you put a cover over it, the flame goes out because it's starved for oxygen, okay? And so fireplaces and kitchens can be in the Northwest because of the air element helping fires. Um, so you could think of that, you know, like if you have a gas stove or something, but Southeast is really the ideal. Now, if the stove is, if the kitchen is in a different area like the Northeast, again, that's gonna create some negative vibrational energies. They, you may not notice it at all unless it combines with some other factors in your birth chart or something like that. Some tendency that you already have in the body. And some of this is unavoidable. There's some karma you have to walk through in this life. Other things about the kitchen. Um, we know that the Northeast is a sacred zone, that that's water element. Um, but basically the, North, the Northeast is an area that we also would not wanna put really heavy stuff. So ideally the refrigerator, the heaviest item in the kitchen is not in the Northeast, but sometimes it will be. So, you know, you do what you can with the ultra rectification and keeping it really clean and uh, decluttering it periodically. You know, you don't want lots of dead bits of stuff floating around in there. You don't want a jar of something that's growing mold. You want to keep the whole environment very full of prana and clean and fresh because that attracts positive energies as opposed to more murky ones. Another thing is that Vastu requires beauty. As an artist that, and someone who has a strong Venus, this was something really important to me and really made me perk up. You know, that if it, you follow all the rules, but it's not beautiful, it's not fully Vastu. So make it beautiful. The same thing with your dining room and the rest of your home. Put that attention into it. It'll feel so much better to you. And the, the vibrational effect will be much higher. So that's another thing. Um, another aspect of Vastu is using natural materials, using natural materials as much as possible. So um, that's something you wanna consider if you're remodeling your kitchen, what natural materials can you use? Uh, eating off of, if you have actual silver uh, to eat off of, but you're only pulling it out once or twice a year, start using it more often. Silver is very beneficial to the human body. It's much better to eat off of than stainless steel. And so if you have silver, there's no point in having it sit in a case and then get maybe polished up a little bit more before Thanksgiving or some other special event. Use it lots, it's good for you. It's important, it's essential. I'm so grateful, thank you, Sherry. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Very wonderful to meet with all of you. Thank you. I'll be happy to hear from you. I have a mailing list also. You can get my newsletters and I'm on Instagram. Bye.